it's really really early i'm not normally up this early and especially not normally up this early making videos but um i felt the need to discuss something that's been on my mind for quite some time i've been hit with mental health slurs all my life and i've been hit with racial slurs all my life the irony of that is is that Everything that I've been through, I've been in the position where I've been able to take that and utilize it towards like kind of rebuilding my life. So other people's hatred in my case, it led to me loving myself a bit more and realizing there's actually nothing really wrong with me. But... Given everything that's been going on in the, in Ukraine and given everything that is soon to come, this is the reason why I'm so tough on racial slurs and mental health slurs. Not only is it personally hurtful, but it leads to real life consequences. We've seen the emerging countries, China and Russia and Ukraine, and we've seen the way that they treat black people in real life, hell, we even see it in America, we see it in Britain, all these racial slurs being thrown around and people wanting to pass it off as a joke or make it out like it's not that serious, like it literally has human consequences. It's been having human consequences for centuries. When it comes to mentally ill folk or folk deemed mentally ill, you know, psychiatry is basically kept in place to maintain the status quo and anybody who doesn't fit the status quo regardless of whether or not they're genuinely ill they end up at worst being euthanized we're seeing that in this country right now there are people being sectioned in the medicaid when they don't need to be knowing what the side effects of those drugs are and then on top of that we've got people who are you know, who the government has been unlawfully experimenting on, being silenced through mental health as well, being silenced through conservatorship abuse and psychiatric abuse. So making mental health slurs. Now, I've used the word crazy and stuff like that, but that's not to describe mental illness. It's usually to describe uh, behaviour. You don't have to be mentally ill to engage in irrational behaviour, case in point you know, using a mental health slur for no other reason than to use it and to make yourself feel better and to give yourself some kind of cheap shot. But those things lead to real life consequences as well. If you look online, there is something called Action TV or Action TV. I can't pronounce it in German, so I'm just going to say Action T4. And what Action T4 was was the um, the mass murder and the mass euthanasia of people who were deemed mentally unfit, even though I guarantee you some of those people were not mentally unfit at all and they were simply dissenting. So mental health slurs lead to real life consequences. You're going to call someone mad or crazy for the fun of it, Understand that it has real life consequences. If you're going to use slurs against people for their race, understand that it has real life consequences. And given that women have also been, have also fallen victim to being mis misdiagnosed and treated as crazy in accordance with, you know, our intuition and our emotionality, understand that it has real life consequences. If you want to be sexist, it has real life consequences. You want to be racist, it has real life consequences. You want to be, um, what I call it there? You want to use mental health slurs, it leads to real life consequences. And as war is literally here, it's on our doorstep. It's literally about to lead to even more people being killed and euthanized. Now, we've already seen the racism that goes on in Russia, China and Ukraine. But truth be told, if there is going to be a race, racial purge or, you know, a purge of women or a purge of um, 
ment so-called mentally ill people or a purge of dissenting voices, it's going to come from within. It's not going to come from foreign countries. But you know these people will make out like it's coming from foreign countries. So the point that I'm making is this. These slurs are personally hurtful to me. They are extremely hurtful and extremely disrespectful. And people have been doing it, knowing it's hurtful and knowing it's disrespectful, but they still want to be known as good people. And unfortunately, if you're going to engage in harassment and stalking that literally has led to getting people killed, is leading to getting people killed. Understand that you're not a good person. Now, I wish I could just let people talk and let people say how they feel, let people express their emotions however they want to express their emotions. I don't always want to condemn people all the time. I don't always want to do it. Nor do I always want to defend myself against people who are talking against me because they're not really talking against me, they're talking against themselves. But understand, if you want to, if you want to use those slurs, if you want to use those slurs then go ahead and use them, but don't use them knowing that they're going to get people killed, knowing that they've gotten people killed, and then try to convince yourself that you're good people. And especially don't do it just because your feelings are hurt over something that has nothing to do with, nothing to do with the way you were born or the way you were built and has everything to do with your actions. So you get criticised over your actions. You get criticised over the way you treat people. And then you fire back by dehumanizing somebody, knowing what it leads to. And you still want to be known as good people. Let me tell you something right now. This is exactly how we ended up sleeping into a world, fucking sleepwalking into World War Three in the first place. It's because people want to be good people, but don't want to make the sacrifice. And people want to be bad people, but don't want to do the work. Now, hold on reverse that people want to be seen as good people but don't want to do the work and people want to be actively be bad people but don't want to make the fucking sacrifice so you want to be a bad person but you don't want to accept the criticism that comes with it you don't want to accept the hatred that comes with it you don't want to accept the the loss of reputation that comes with that even though speaking as somebody who's lost their reputation really doesn't mean a whole lot, especially when you're given the people that you've lost your reputation in front of weren't worth shit to begin with, so take it from me, loss of reputation ain't nothing, so you want to be a bad person without losing your reputation, without losing everything that you, you know, without losing your reputation, without people hating you, without you being isolated, without you being, which is why you lie so much, you want to be a bad person without the costs of being a bad person, without the sacrifice of being a bad person. And then on the, on the other hand, you want to be known as the good person, but you don't want to actually do the work it takes to be a good person, even if it means you suffer personally. You don't want to do the work it takes to be a good person. You don't want to do the work. You don't want to be considerate of other people's feelings. You don't want to own your actions and own the fact that your actions are terrible. You don't want to, you know, you don't care if somebody else is right or wrong. You just want to be able to be a bitch. Okay, well, cool. But being a good person, it takes more than you just like being honest about your shit and then trying to ennoble yourself with it. It takes actively doing the work to change as a person, to grow as a person. To ensure that everything that you do is dedicated towards doing good in the world and not doing it for yourself. You see, this is the thing about being good. This is the tricky thing about being a good person. It's like you have to want to be a good person. You have to want to be selfless. You have to be selfless, but you have to want to be selfless. So it's like you have to be selfish and <laughs> selfish and selfless at the same time. It's, it's really weird. That's the tricky thing about being a good person. You have to want to be good. For its own sake. And then do that. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's hard work. It means straddling in the middle a fucking lot. But it takes work to be a good person. Meaning if you want to, if you want to like, with me, I'm not a good person. I'm not a good person. 
the, the position that I am in right now of being the so-called hero is because everybody else put me there. I am not the fucking hero. Everybody else's slurs, everybody else's bullshit, it put me where I am today. It put me in the position of the hero. I am not a hero. If I'm a hero, I'm passive about it. I'm a passive hero. The truth of the matter is, is that the only thing I'm willing to lay down my life for is the truth. Not being a good person, not being a good, being a bad person. The fucking truth. That's the only thing I am willing to lay down my life for is for truth. Because for me, truth leads to a sense of self. And that means more to me than anything else. So if I end up being in the position of hero or protagonist, it's not because I put myself there. It's because other people put me in that position. Because they're not owning their shit. And they're not owning themselves. But the point I'm making is that in order to be a good person, it takes work. It takes a lot of self-awareness. It takes us actually recognizing our feelings and recognizing, you know, how does something make me feel? Okay, all right. So what am I going to do from this point once I recognize my feelings? How am I going to handle this situation? Am I going to do something that's good for me and everyone else? Or am I going to take these feelings and do something that's bad for me and everyone else? And I know people say it's not that simple, but it is that simple. And like I said before, I don't want to keep fucking condemning people because the thing is, I know the effect of shame. I know the, the effect that shame has on people. Sometimes you shame people, and the, you, this is the thing, you shame people, the more you shame people, and especially if you shame people over something really, really bad that they've done, nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten, you shame somebody for doing something really, really bad, they'll retreat inwards like a little child. They will treat inwards like a little child, try to justify it, and then most likely double down. That's actually what most people do. When they've done something really, really terrible, they double down and they're like, oh, you know, fuck, you know, on the inside, they'll just want to die. But on the outside, you know, they'll, they'll want to die. They'll just want to die on the inside. But then on the outside, they'll double down on their bullshit. So I understand that shame can be counterproductive. I, I get how shame can be counterproductive and instead of fostering good people it just fosters socially savvy people which is not the same I get that I know you know there are times where I just want to let people have their feelings even if those feelings are directed at me but hear what right how am I supposed to respect people's feelings how am I supposed to respect your feelings how am I supposed to respect how scared you get sometimes how am I supposed to respect how angry or how sad or how ashamed or how guilty you feel. How am I supposed to even recognize how happy you can feel sometimes? How am I supposed to recognize and, and be sensitive to your feelings when you ain't even sensitive to your feelings, when you will do anything and everything to run away from them, even if it means engaging in slurs or using slurs or hurting people in a way that will inevitably or may inevitably get them killed so how am i going to respect your feelings or you can't even respect your own is my question and it's clear you don't respect your own because you, you'd literally rather kill and die to feel like you're right rather than be right you rather kill and die to make somebody else suffer or to punish somebody else for the way that you feel. You don't even acknowledge your feelings. You don't even respect your feelings, and yet you want to punish somebody else for hurting them. And that's what leads to slurs. And those slurs are what lead to robbing somebody of their human rights. If you want to keep using them, keep using them, but understand that you're a bad person. And if you want to be a bad person, it takes sacrifice. People are going to hate you. 
And it's not because they're not bad people that like, let's get it twisted. If you're a bad person and you own the fact that you're a bad person, people are not going to hate you because they're better than you. They're going to hate you because you remind them of everything that they hate and you make them look stupid. That's what they're going to hate you for. They're not going to hate you because you're terrible. Nobody really hates terrible people. If they did, they, would be, they wouldn't be successful. But if you're a good person, if you want to be a good person, then don't use the slurs. You know what they mean. You know what they lead to. If you want to be a good person, don't use the slurs. But then understand it's going to take work. Understand that being a good person takes work. It takes you recognizing, okay, I feel like this, but it, it doesn't give me the right to make other people feel like that. Like, just fucking do the work. Do the work to change. Do the work to be a good person. Like, people, people are just still not getting it. Like, you're just still not getting it. You do not get to be yourself and have no sacrifices made for that. You don't get to do it. And if who you are is the type of person that encourages genocide, if that is the type of person then you are, that you are, and if that's the type of person that you want to be, you better own it. But if it's not the type of person that you want to be, well, you've got a real decision to make. Anyway, I've got to go. I, like, it's really fucking early. It's like 7.47 in the morning. But um, I just had to get all that off my chest real quick. What else do I need to say before I go? Yeah. Oh, this is getting worse. This whole situation is getting worse. So in the Ukraine, they're leaving black people behind now. Ukraine already has a problem with anybody who's not white and blonde, but it's really in this situation, it's because it's really because of their own governments. But yeah, the fact the fact that so many black people have been left behind in a war zone, like again, what kind of people do you want to be? Like it's as simple as that. People try to make out like it's not that simple, and it is. And that's for the psychiatric profession. And that people are already being locked up when they don't need to be. Specifically because they're a threat to, you know, wealthier people or, you know, as is always the case. Or, you know, they're dissenting or like, and they're more likely to be institutionalised than people who actually need to be institutionalised. All of that is happening on our doorstep right the fuck now. So I'm saying decide what kind of person you want to be. You want to use the slurs and be a bad person, fine. But you're a bad person and you need to make the sacrifices that come with that. You see, what, one thing I've learned from the occult one thing I've learned from the occult is the concentration of energy. We call it focus. But really, it's it's pulling up all your energy and all your resources, all your heat and pointing them towards one specific direction. We learn in alchemy that it doesn't matter if you're a good person or a bad person. If you're going to be that person, you better be that person the whole way. <laughs> you better be that person the whole way and you better not comp and you better not complain when people you know, if you're a good person and you decide to be a good person, you have the right to your feelings, but understand that that's the choice you made. If you want to be a bad person, you can be a bad person, but understand that that is the choice you made. So when it comes to using slurs like racial slurs, mental health slurs, misogyny, if you want to do it, do it. You want to be that person, be that person. But understand that comes with sacrifice. 
understand that all the love that you could have had is going to be replaced with power and it's a poor substitute. It's a very poor substitute. That is ultimately unfulfilling unless you're really built like that. Anyway, I gotta go. Hang on. Is there anything else I've left out? Yeah. One thing that I want to say. Many of us are passive. No, not passive. Inactive. You see, we get passive and inactive twisted. We seem to think that being inactive and being bad people makes us good people. It's, 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 it's all about being active. Even when you're being passive, you're being active, you're making a decision. And many, many people around the world have passively welcomed World War Three after they were completely warned about our governments experimenting on their own people, even when they were completely warned about the direction that this would be taken, like everybody was warned, they chose to ignore it. They chose to kill and die for a lie rather than the truth. Everything that we're seeing right now is as a result of decades of people telling the truth, being ostracized and blacklisted and none of the public asking any real questions. Everything that's going on right now is as a result of people who are telling the truth, being diagnosed as paranoid schizophrenic or being, um, being defamed as being meth addicts. You know, or even being deemed a terrorist that have people under a spell. You had decades to get yourself together. You had decades to get right. You had decades to avoid this. Decades. You could have avoided this a long time ago if you got if it, the majority of the public got their heads out of their asses, and you know people who wanted to be villain without villains without making the sacrifice got their heads out of their asses rather than being inactive in the things that they think are really bad, like as if that makes you good people. That's just doing the bare minimum. You've got that bar and that bar is lowered all the way to the earth's core and you want to talk about being good people. Stop it. Just stop it. It is your inactivity, not your passivity. Pass passiv passiveness is still active. Passiveness is a good thing. You weren't passive, you were inactive. And because you were inactive in doing the real sick shit, in doing the real awful shit, that got into your mind that you must be good and you must be good people and you must be smarter. This is the thing. People are not as smart as they think they are and they're not as good as they think they are. So what happens is that they do things that lead to wider consequences, genuinely thinking inside their minds that they're not doing that which is fucking scary. And that's exactly how we ended up walking into a world war. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't give a fuck what nobody thinks. This is World War Three. You're all slept walking to it because the exact same people who tried to warn you, you wanted to have them euthanized low key. And you, you knew you were doing it, you just didn't give a shit. You knew you were doing it. You knew what you were doing. Like you just didn't care. You didn't care. You knew you were doing it. <laughs> you fucking knew. Like, there's no way you didn't. There's no way you didn't know. Deep down, you knew how evil this world was, how bad this world was. You knew. And you still chose to do what you did. You still chose to... And you're still doing it now. You're still, do, you're still slandering people who literally all they ever did was try to tell you the truth about what this world was like and ask for your help. And now we're in, we're looking at we're looking down the barrel of a fucking nuclear warhead because of it. We're looking down the fucking nose of a nuclear warhead because of it. You still ain't learned yet. You would rather kill and die for your comfort. <laughs> you would rather kill and die for your comfort through your inaction and through um, passively, passively through resentment. 
than to actually actively do anything, to do any of the work that it takes to be a good person, including remaining open-minded. Of course, call a spade a fucking spade, man. That's that's what it boils down to. Well, you know, it's not even just the... It's not even, I talk about gang stalking on my other channel, but it's not just that that led to this situation, even though gang stalking was priming this situation. It wasn't just that. It was the public as well. You would rather kill and die for a lie if that lie is comfortable than kill and die for the truth. And that's, that's, that's the problem with people and that's always the problem with you. You, you want to be one thing or the other. You, you, no, you, you don't even want to be one thing or the other. You just want to be in the middle and, and do as little work as possible or make as little sacrifice as possible. You want to get as much as possible out of a situation without giving anything. And that's the problem. That's always the problem. If you want to use these slurs, use them. You want to say those things, say them. But understand you're going to be hated. And understand that if you want to keep your secrets, you're going to have to walk around for the rest of your life watching people getting round up, knowing what you did. You're going to have to live with everything that you've done for the rest of your life, watching people getting rounded up that don't need to be rounded up, watching people getting killed that don't need to be killed because of everything that you've said and done. And now i got to go. So to conclude this, once again, I've repeated this several times. If you want to use the fucking slurs, go ahead and use them. But understand that whether you choose to be a good person and not use them or whether you chose to choose to be a bad person and use them it takes sacrifice and it takes work either way so there's no point entertaining it if you're not going to do the fucking work there's no point even entertaining it on either side if you're not going to do the work simple Anyway, what time is it now? It's almost eight o'clock in the morning. Um, I just wanted to get that off my chest. Now I've got to go. I, I, I'm sure I forgot something. Oh, um, yeah, so Ukraine is still fighting. Um, Ukraine are holding up better than people anticipated because everybody, like, Everybody and their mum is like basically defending the country. Um, but it will be interesting to see how everything pans out at the end of the day. Once again, I don't have a dog in this fight, but. Yeah, now I've got to go. Anyway, I love you guys. Take care. Bye bye. Hold up. What time is it? It's almost eight. Yeah. So look up Action T4. Um, I'm going to leave a description when I post this on YouTube. Yeah, that's it. That's what I forgot to say. I'm going to post Action T4 on YouTube. I'm going to post about the Ukraine situation with regards to African and Caribbean students down there. And yeah, you'll see what I'm talking about. Anyway, I love you guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.